It is out, and I've got Sumit coming onto the stage. There he is. What's up, dude? Hey, Demetrius. Love the t-shirt. <laughs> Thanks, man. So, you are one of the few people that I hear talking about recommender systems or just recommendation engines with LLMs. And I am so excited by this topic because, again, going back to this LLM in production report, in the use cases section, when we ask people what are they using the LLMs for, recommendations were actually one of the strong use cases. So it is, I, I would say in my mind, at least uh, the work that I see you sharing, you are at the forefront of this. And I love that you are here and you're gonna school us on a little bit of it. I wanna put 10 minutes on the clock, I'll be back and I will see you soon, man. Yep, thank you so much. Um, I hope you can see my screen. Um, yeah, awesome. So, hello everyone. Um, LLMs have emerged as this powerful tools for a wide range of NLP tasks. And recently there has been a significant interest in the recommendation systems community on um, using these LLMs to enhance various aspects of recommendation systems. Um, today I'll briefly highlight how um, large language models are being used in recommendation systems. Why should they be used in the first place and what are some of the associated challenges? So before we begin, uh, a little about myself. Uh, my name is Sumit Kumar. I work as a senior research engineer, a senior machine learning engineer uh, now at, at Meta and um, I mainly work with content recommendation platforms. Um, previously, I worked as a recommendation systems MLE at TikTok. Um, uh, NLP research scientist at Amazon and a speech recognition engineer for Samsung. Um, so one of the big motivations for using LLMs for recommendations is that LLMs encode a massive amount of external knowledge that can supplement the user behavior data that we commonly use in recommenders. So for example, because of its web scale knowledge, an LLM can recommend a user to buy turkeys uh, when it is Thanksgiving, but a traditional recommender system may not be able to do that if uh, there is no log the click behavior that relates turkeys with, with Thanksgiving. And LLMs have shown uh, strong zero-shot and Q-shot capabilities, uh, which can help a lot in the recommender systems where we often deal with um, challenges like data sparsity and gold starts. And uh, we can also utilize the high quality textual feature representations from LLMs um, to more effectively model the text data that we handle in recommendation systems, such as user profiles and item descriptions um, and so on. So one way to understand or look at the current state of this line of work is to uh, categorize it into a discriminative and generative approaches uh, for recommendation. In the discriminative uh, paradigm, the language models have mainly been used to provide embeddings for the downstream tasks. Uh, Bird series of models usually fall in this category, which are rather smaller language models, um, and they can be further classified into fine tuning and prompt tuning. Um, in fine tuning, the pre trained language model is uh, tuned with data specific to the downstream task. Uh, for recommendations, uh, this data usually contains user item interactions, um, item descriptions, user profiles, and other contextual information. Um, in prompt tuning, the tuning objective of the downstream task is uh, aligned with the uh, pre-training loss. So for this presentation, our focus will be on the generative uh, paradigm, which can be further categorized into non-tuning and tuning methods. Um, non-tuning work includes uh, prompting methods, which uh, where the researchers assume that the LLMs already have the recommendation capabilities and they try to trigger these capabilities by introducing specific prompts. Um, in in context learning, these prompts also include some demonstrative examples. Um, tuning work includes prompt tuning and instruction tuning. Although the delineation between the two is not very clear, but some of the literature calls it uh, prompt tuning when, they, uh, when the parameters of the LLMs are uh, being fine-tuned on a specific task um, and instruction tuning when they're tuned on multiple tasks with different type of instructions. Um, this is an example prompt from this research paper from Alibaba where they um, 
evaluated the chat GPT's uh, zero shot and few shot recommendation capabilities. Um, in this prompting method, the prompt consists of a task description that describes the recommendation task in natural language, uh, a behavior injection component that injects user item interaction information into the prompt, and an output format indicator. The same paper further added some demonstrative examples um, uh, into the prompt to uh, get these recommendations from a chat GPT in a uh, few short settings. Um, and this study and a few others have shown that uh, zero shot and few shot recommendations can be random guessing, but um, they, uh, or maybe some carefully designed heuristics as well, but they still cannot surpass the performance of a traditional recommendation model that is trained specifically for a given task and um, task specific data. So to overcome these shortcomings, several researchers have proposed frameworks to uh, fine tune large language models with recommendation data. Um, These frameworks use user item interactions to create instructions that are then used to fine tune the LLMs. Um, there are also several frameworks that take a foundational model approach, such as this P5 model, um, that extensively pre-train their model on a, on a number of recommendation tasks with the same um, language modeling objective, and everything is under, of course, a uh, text-to-text -text paradigm. Um, zooming out a bit, in the recommendation space, uh, LLMs have been used for uh, data augmentation, um, for uh, encoding text features, they have been used for, they've been used as a conversational tool um, that also decides whether to continue uh, talking to the user or to call the backend API to further refine the current set of candidates. Um, some researchers have also used them as lead anchors alongside um, the traditional retrieval model. And in many papers, they have also been used directly for generating recommendation outputs. Um, so why should you use an LLM for recommendations? Well, um, LLMs uh, external world knowledge can supplement the, um, the behavior data and recommendations. And in few short settings, they can adapt to new information without having to retrain or uh, change the model architecture. Their zero shot performance um, uh, can help in uh, mitigating some of the data sparsity and gold start issues that are very common in uh, recommender systems. And through a chat based interface, users can now um, directly interact with the recommender system component and um, they can also use natural language and uh, they can do all of this uh, uh, when you compare it with the traditional recommender system they only are passively involved uh, through implicit feedback and as a byproduct of chain of thought reasoning LLMs can justify specific recommendations in natural language which can increase the transparency of the recommendation algorithms and using LLMs can also simplify some complex feature engineering steps like uh, some of the feature pre-processing and the embedding methods. And I, I believe it's equally important to be aware of some of the problems with this theme as well. Um, LLMs may recommend items that are not present in the candidate set and they can be um, highly sensitive to the design of the input prompt. Um, they may give you an answer that is in incorrect format or very verbose when you simply ask for a yes or no question or a rating uh, on a scale of one to five. Um, they can also be highly uh, sensitive, like I mentioned, to the input prompts and uh, deciding how many demonstrations to include in the prompt, um, what kind of demonstration uh, to be included is also an open uh, problem right now. And IDs um, have been, ID-like features have been very successful in the traditional recommendation models, but um, incorporating them into prompts can be really challenging. Um, there have been lots of research papers on that um, theme as well. And online recommender systems are real-time services and they are extremely time, sens time sensitive as well. But these prompt generation and LLM inference steps, they have significant amount of time cost as well. Um, there can be a huge gap between the universal knowledge that's encoded within the parameters of LLM and the specificity of the user behavior patterns that we see in the private domain data. And of course, data security is another related concern. Um, limited context lens with some of these LLMs um, can make it really hard to incorporate uh, a substantial amount of uh, behavioral information or the sequences into the prompts. Um, some studies have also uh, shown that in um, if there are some popular items, for example, best-selling books um, that might appear more frequently in chat GPT's pre-training corpus, they're also more likely to be ranked higher when ChatGPT was used for uh, ranking uh, tasks. 
Um, some LLMs have also been shown to have position bias, where changing the order of the input items significantly changed the LLM's ranking output as well. So that, that sort of makes them suboptimal for uh, re-ranking. Um, and some of these LLMs have been shown to generate harmful content, reinforce social biases, and exhibit unfairness to uh, sensitive attributes like gender, race, and so on. And of course, there are already a lots of research work on how to potentially mitigate some of these problems. And um, using LLMs for recommender systems has been a very active recent um, research area. And there has been lots of exciting stuff happening. Um, but that's all from my side for today. Um, if you'd like to reach out, you can find me on my socials mentioned here. I also write a blog and a newsletter on various information retrieval topics. Um, thank you for listening. And thank you, Dimitrios, for inviting me. Dude, you're too kind, man. How could I not have you on here? It is my honor. It's so cool to see this. And ah, I love it. So I'm going to be in San Francisco in two weeks. And I hope to see you in person. And for now, I'm going to kick you off the stage because it is super late where I am. And I'm trying to finish uh, at a decent hour. I appreciate this, Sumit. We'll be in touch, man. Thanks so much. Thank you so much.